Oh, I've been doing some fun stuff lately, and it's really starting to please me as a developer here. Making this game called Wraithbinder, and now we've got the female body type. This is so neat to me because making Songbringer, my last video game, it was all about 2D pixel art and really custom stuff. Everything was, every single frame was hand drawn. And for this, I'm using a, a technique called procedural animation where each different body part is composed at runtime and compiled into a, a model. Um, and these all these models are drawn in Magic of Voxel originally, and then I animate them all in Blender and combine them all together procedurally at runtime to create this, where I can change the, bo the completely change the gender of the character just based on different body parts. So um, this female character here has you know has completely different body parts and um, and looks completely different than the male uh, counterpart. So we let's switch back to the male body. You can. You know, we can see with that whole male body we're all used to already with this game. Um, oh, I'm just occasionally getting this value as Nan error. Looks like we got it that time. All right, so uh, so yeah, here's the male body, right? And that's all just from some different body parts. And uh, also, what's new is the uh, being able to carry your sword on your back and then unsheath it when you want you can sheath your sword later love that that's pretty cool too oh another new thing we're gonna get into these body types some more but uh, another new thing is the fist weapon I think this is gonna be pretty cool because the more variety I can give for how you were gonna uh, approach your own combat style in this video game I think the better why are we getting multiple errors while I'm streaming and I never see these errors at runtime. What the heck? Here's the fist weapon. We'll go up and uh, punch this shield here. It's just, you know, the player just like, he puts one, one fist up in front of his face and the other one he throws out and hits things. That's cool too. Um, so let's switch back to the female body part, body type and um, this time we'll give her a cloak why not and she'll fight with her fist for a second um, we'll get into the code here in a second but uh, this is uh, now she has a cloak still fighting with her fist Ch you can change hairstyles eye colors, all sorts of armor different pieces like your shoulders, your breastplate, your your different cloak, different um, arm armor, leg, um, it could be could be different clothes, could be different armor, um, long hair, no hair, short hair, all this stuff is determinable based on your items that you possess. So basically what this female body type is, let's take a look at the items.txt and that will show you what the female body type is. Um, it's basically an, a cosmetic item and these item flags are used at runtime to determine which items can be purchased versus which items, um, well they're all purchasable right now but later on you know like you'll only be able to purchase cosmetic items in one place you know and um, and then there's all sorts of other flags that go along with all these items. But basically what happens here is that um, the female body type overrides all of these different model parts. And let's go ahead and look at the uh, one of these um, models in Blender. So like we've got all these different sections like, you know, the head, the chest, the core, the legs, and all that. Um, is overridden here at runtime with the female body. So we've got different hips for the female body, different core, chest, breast, head, arms, and legs. And um, let's look at one of these model parts. There, that's kind of it. Kind of illustrates. This is a nice one because this is this is the feminine, the female hips. And this is going to be body style one. I'm thinking like the first body style for each male and female is going to be. Um, athletic and then there's also gonna be sort of like a really large build sort of person that's just got a lot of 
boom, size. And then there's also going to be a skinny person type thing. So in all those, male and female. Uh, but for now, we've just got sort of this athletic build or average build in the middle, whatever you want to call it. Here's the hips for the male, right? That's just some, some more squarish um, male hips going on there. And then here's the hips for the female. We've got a lot more... Um, feminine curves going on even though they're voxels and they're all square little cubes um, this is sort of more of a feminine approach and then when you combine all like all of her different pieces at runtime you get this this is her um, this is her all compiled together that's what she looks like in fact we can look at the model output um, I've got it so it caches all of the models after it compiles everything and procedurally animates all the characters it caches them so that I can see what the heck it's it's outputting. Here's one of the outputs of the male. Let's go look at the female idol. We've got a lot of cached animations right now. This is why it's taking so long to scroll through. Here we go, B. There. That's her couple frames into her animation. She looks a little weird, right? In this, let's go back to her the original frame. It's that it kind of like makes her look less weird. There we go. That's what she looks like on the first frame of her idle animation. Right? You could say some of this looks a little weird, right? Like maybe her butt's kind of big and like her her boobs are kind of high, right? They're like way up there, but when you look at the right it, at the camera angle of the game is it all kind of gels and looks better than it does just here in these in these all zoomed up close with these voxels like this. But this is what she looks like. And then also the, the game can color things differently. So like you noticed in, in my current play, her eyes are orange and her hair is orange and all that. All her highlight colors are orange. And it just basically changes the, the color palette um, when it, it first loads it and then changes the color palette and then does other stuff like rotating and shading and stuff like that. But that's that's what she looks like so far. That's, um you know, this clothes style as well. So like, she, you know, We'll have shirts and other kinds of things eventually. Um, so she might not look. This would be one style you can make your character look like, but uh, there's gonna you're gonna have like a lot of options. So um, yeah, it's really. What I mean, what what kind of code do I really? Could I? I this is kind of like the code I'm showing you right here. There's it's trying to go into all the code that makes all this happen is just gonna be too much. Uh, but anyways. Uh, another cool thing, um, what else? Is it? We showed the fist. We showed the female. Um, gosh, I think that's it for now. One of the, well, uh, I guess I'll talk about one of the next things I'm working on here. And the next thing I'm working on is rotating voxels better. So let's look at this uh, player kneel animation right here. This is where um, he's getting up from the ground, right? or kneeling down and, and touching the ground and when we start to animate this he starts reaching and getting closer and closer to the ground and right right about here you can see things start to look weird right this is where it's starting to be weird there's this gap right here we should definitely have some voxels right there you know it should look more like that right at that position and there's if we progress further into this animation I'm sure more of these holes are gonna yeah definitely we've got holes opening up there's a big old gap in his head. There's a hole right here in the back of his head. And I've got some ideas on how to fix all that. Basically, um, we can re-volumize all the voxels, which just means that it, it's, it's a bit for each one of the voxels. And no, so you can know pretty quickly by looking up a single bit whether um, a, a, the voxel is filled in 3D space. And so we volumize it and then go back and look, th look through and count for each voxel um, count the surrounding voxels and if we've got a mismatch or if we've got a hole then fill in the hole so that's kind of the idea there so um, man lots of progress being made here on character creation and design of the, the you as a player being able to design your world and make it make it your own that's kind of what Wraithbinder is about Songbringer was more of a, a curated art experience where you play it and it's sort of, you can't really change the character, you can't really change the art that much. Um, but this, man, this is where you get like as much control as you possibly can 
and um, create your character how you want to create your character. So I think this is going to be really fun for an online multiplayer game that Wraithbinder is going to be. Is just being able to totally like make your character look unique compared to your friends that you're playing with, or or just the random people you're playing with online. It'd be really neat to just look different. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. Um, let's see this animation one more time. I love seeing this sword unsheath animation. Um, oh, we don't, we don't even have a sword to unsheath. Let's get the sword again. This really makes me feel fulfilled as a game developer to be to have this whole new system here of being able to have or just it's not our new system it's just proving that my system works with different body styles right at first I had just a male character and I didn't know whether you know I had a pretty good inclination that I'd be able to get a female character to work but now that I have a female character I can have all sorts of other characters too all sorts of other body types so exciting um, so yeah, thanks for watching this video, and we'll hit you with another update of Wraithbinder development later on. Alright, see ya!